Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at this X Hornby double O model of the Kobo. It's quite an interesting thing, perhaps not a favourite of many people's. It was one of those models which was uh, picked up by uh, the Lions Brothers Rovex when, when they acquired Hornby double O in, in the mid 60s and it was marketed for a short time in, as part of the Trying Hornby range. Which is quite an interesting thing, very powerful and she has a, a great sounding motor. And I've got a, along with this sort of interesting set of wagons, we've got some open wagons with loads there, and we've got some cable drums, and a handful of those train container wagons, and the old guardsman on the back there. You say she is very powerful, absolutely effortless going up there. Let's just watch her go off into the distance there, around that second radius curve, and onto the old suspension bridge. Now, from what I read, when when uh, Lions Brothers got hold of Hornby Double O and they, they looked into the stores as a, a number of models which were left over and there were, there were a lot of stocks of certain models so I think to, to try and uh, maximise um, what they got they, they tried to market these for a short period of time. We'll have a look at the old uh, amalgamation catalogue or leaflet in a few moments smoothly around there just listen to all those wheels on the track. Now we're going to come through Points number five there, just slowing down a little as she comes through the points. And we'll, we'll bring this whole lot onto the old passing loop here. There we go. And then we'll switch points five behind her. And we'll run them back just onto that little spur at the end of the old passing loop. So there they are, just backed up to the end, end of the spur. On the passing loop there, we've got a handful of the trying container wagons there, and we've got some cable drum wagons, a couple of different colours there, and then we'll move along. And we've got some open wagons with the old oil drum load and the timber load, and then we've got the old converter wagon, our uh, 577, and we can see down there, we've got the old Hornby double O coupling on the one end, and the trying D-shaped coupling on the other end, so I'm just going to uncouple that by just lifting it up. There we go, and just pop that back down on the track. And then we'll get this Kobo moved around, and we'll, we'll pick up these maroon coaches sitting here at the station. The converter wagon I was just using on the old layout there was introduced as an idea in this uh, amalgamation leaflet of 1965, just introducing the two companies coming together, Trying Railways and Hornby Double O. Look at that great image there, which went on to be used on the, on the cover of the, the 1966 catalogue, which was the first Trying Horn, true Trying Hornby catalogue, I think. So if we just open up the the leaflet. I think there are only eight pages in this, but here we go on page number three. We've got the old converter wagon here. We can see we've got the old tension lock style D shaped coupling on one side and the Hornby double O coupling on the other side there. Very simple idea. We've got the old converter track above there. So I believe these were to be given away with, with some of the, the models, the locomotives, which were to be absorbed into the old trying Hornby range later. So we'll just have a, a quick flip through the, the old leaflet here. You can see the, the range of the of models here which were to be absorbed into the range possibly over the next couple of years. And we've got the old Kobo up there and that's catalogue number R2233. Some great models there aren't there? We'll just move on through. And there we have that, that great spread there. What a layout that must have been to set up in the studio that day. Lots of interesting models in that picture, aren't there? And we'll just have a look at the old back page. And we see proudly sporting Trying Hornby's name here, new models to be introduced. Looks like early parts of the Battle Space range here. Note that there's there's no, no Battle Space stickers on these items. So we'll just put this to one side. And here we have the old 1966 catalogue. And we've got the old converter wagon up here. So it's just basically one of the, the open wagons really, isn't it? If we just move back a couple of pages here, we can see we've got the old Kobo here introduced 
in the range. And then we go back another page, we've got the old West Country class here. And I believe a converter wagon was to be given away with each of these models. Although later the following year in 67, um, the horse box converter wagon was introduced, which went better with this model and passenger coaches. So we'll just put this one to one side. And there's that great image again, isn't it? It really is lovely. It's a very matte finish on this uh, 66 catalogue. We'll just pop that over there. And here we've got the old 1967 catalogue. We've got the old converter wagon here with a very bold, gra bold background. That's the word I'm looking for. We'll just have a look at that there. And then just move a, a couple of pages over. And then we've got the old horse box converter wagon. Makes its entrance there again. Very bold graphics. It's a, a lovely illustration that, isn't it? Let's have a swift look at the old cover. Terrific, isn't it? We'll just pop that to one side. So here we've got the old converter wagons. So this is the open wagon. We'll just have a quick look at that. I think they were all in black. We've got the old tension lock D-shaped coupling there and the old Hornby Double O style plastic type of coupling on the other end there. A very simple idea to, to bring the two ranges of models together. Let's we'll have a look at the old box. They've got these great illustrations on the look at that. Been mended by sellotape in the past and I'm not sure whether this this uh, rubber stamp date there is really original or not, but it was it was on there when, when the model came to me. We'll just pop that one down. And we'll have a look at the old horse box. We've seen we've seen this one a few months ago in a video. Again, a terrific diagram on the top there. Old model number there. They're, they're great things, aren't they? Just look at them together. Let's just have a look at those diagrams together as well. Really lovely items to have. Swift look at the old horse box. There we go, it's just a, the standard horse box from the range, I think. And again, we've got the old tension lock style coupling on the one end, and the old Hornby double O coupling on the other end. As I say, very, a simple idea to bring the two ranges together. And one of these models came with an instruction leaflet, so it came with this one. But it does serve both models. So a very simple piece of printed information there and nothing on the back. But uh, instead of using the old horse box converter wagon today, I'm just using this conversion I've done recently. I've just converted a chassis for one of the Mark I coaches. And I've uh, got a bogies from the old C CKD kits and uh, they, they just screw in, they're, they're quite a neat idea. So I've removed a coupling, the, the tension lock coupling, and I've just adapted one of these very old metal style Hornby double O couplings and, and it works rather well. So I could use this chassis for all sorts of Mark I coaches really. So we'll see that in action. And away she goes, leaving those wagons behind her. I'm just gonna run around the old passing loop now and pick up those maroon coaches standing at the station. We're going to have a, a great shot as she passes down underneath all of those gantries towards the colour light signals. And as those points snap open, they're going to switch very smoothly through there and they'll switch back again. And off we go past the wagons and the maroon coaches. Now you can hear it clanging away over the points in the diamond crossings. Very distinctive sound this model has. And effortlessly there through points number eight switch those back and we'll move smoothly back and pick up these coaches. I think we have those and off we go again and I say it is just effortless. It is so powerful this model these coaches present no problem at all for it. The model of the Kobo that we've got running today on the layout was introduced by Hornby Double O in very late 1961. And this is a, a very beaten up copy of the 1962 catalog. So possibly the first time that the, the Kobo appeared on, on the pages of a catalog. And there she is. I believe the writing in, the, in this catalog or the pricing is Italian. So I've been told. So some very interesting things in this catalog. We'll just flip back a couple of pages to the train sets. 
and she was included in a set as well. But this time, a very interesting looking set, isn't it? I believe she was never a very popular selling model, and by the time Rovex took over the business, there was rather a lot of these Kobos left unsold, sitting on the shelves. There's an interesting piece of paper been stapled into here and I believe it's a product list and there's something written in Italian at the top typed it's sort of a, a carbon type coffee I'll just lift that up so it's a, definitely a product list of some sort and there's quite a lot of information at the top there which I, I haven't uh, got translated yet so if I just pop that down and have a look at the other side of it it's very soft paper this so I'm just going to be quite careful with it and turn it turn it upside down and we'll have a have a swift look at that and um, we'll see if anybody knows what it says. I'll just turn that over it goes. And there we go. So I'll say if anybody got any information on what, what this what this says, just please please let me know. So we'll just close that up, turn it over again. I'll just have a quick look at the opening pages. There's a wonderful illustration here of a child being pulled along by I will haul me double those trains. Bit of a strength test there. Absolutely wonderful thing, isn't it? So we'll pop this down and we'll, we'll have a, a swift look at the old, uh, the old model. So there she is. She's a, it's a great big heavy old thing. So a little bit on the old ugly side. As I say, I don't think it was very popular at the time. You can hear that metal work there, the, the bogey touching the, the body work. They've achieved quite a lot of detail there. If you just look at the, the roof detailing there, there's quite a lot in there, isn't there? As I say, trying were, were molding things in plastic at the time. And I believe there were plans to, to try and put lighting in this to improve sales and also put uh, yellow warning panels on the end. Again, there is quite a lot of nice detail there when, when you look down the side of it, but it isn't. Uh, isn't the, the best looking thing in the toy box, is it? So we'll just pop that around and have a swift look underneath there. So we've got the pickups at this end. So a great big securing screw and a washer there. And then we've got uh, rubber traction tires on the, on the drive wheels there and a, a dummy wheel in the middle there. And I think the side frames are, are screwed on separately. Wonderful illustration on the box lid here, isn't it? We've got the old Trang Hornby sticker stuck straight over Hornby 00's name. We've got the old catalog number there, 2233. And the Trang Hornby simply stuck an R on the front of that one when they included it on their catalog list. Let's have a, a swift look at the end there. Still got Hornby 00's name there. The box has seen better days. There is quite a bit of tape on it. And it's just sort of flaking away. We'll just work our way around the box and there was what is what looks like sorry some pricing here on the end and again evidence of tape being stuck on it in, in various places so we'll just open that up we'll have a quick look inside so lovely bright yellow cardboard on the inside and we'll swift, swiftly open that out there we go, it's a beautiful box, isn't it? Sadly, no paperwork with this. I've just taken out the very large securing screw which holds the, the chassis onto the body there. Just look at the size of that. It's amazing, isn't it? So we'll just pop that down to one side and then we'll just lift out the chassis. There it is. Great big heavy old thing. Look at the, the weight of that metal bracket there that holds, holds the two the two bogies together there. There's lots of play in it. And we've got the old wires for the pickup on, on this end there. And I say the, the, the side frames are just screwed in with those great big screws. And we'll just move along, a bit of sellotape holding the wiring in there. And then we've got the old Ringfield motor. Just look at the size of it. I'll probably move a truck with that. There's those lovely worms there which drive each of the drive wheels. That lovely gearing assembly there on the bottom end of the motor. It really is a, a terrific thing, isn't it? And the weight of this is just astounding. It really is. And then you've got the old metal cast body that sits on top of this as well. It really is something else. 
So we'll just pop that down and have a, a swift look at the old body. There we go, we've got the, the glazing units just clipped in there. And we've got the, the boss there with the, the old securing screw goes in. If I turn that round the other way, we'll be able to read, read what's printed on the inside in there. So, it says, Hornby Double O, made in England, Meccano Limited. So it is, really is a, a lovely thing, isn't it? Just swinging around that second radius curve there and passing the signal box, just listen to the noise of the motor now. Those coaches look lovely, don't they? Wonderful maroon colour there. I think we have the full set. We've got the full parcels, which is the one I've adapted with the old Hornby Double O coupling on the CKD bogies. And then we've got a restaurant buffet car, and then we've got a composite and a sleeper, and finished off with a brake. I think these coaches were available quite widely between 1962 and 69. Just look at that coming towards us now, over the uneven track there, through the old points. Again, just listen to the motor, and then the sound of all those wheels coming through the points there. Wonderful. That's what toy trains are all about. Passing along, along past the station now, clanging again over all the points and diamond crossings. It, it makes a sort of a, a ringing sound, I think, was some of the metalwork collides within the model. And that incline really does present not much of a challenge at all to it. Although it is rather harsh on, on the elevated section, the, the suspension bridge doesn't really like that. It does bow quite a bit. And where it flies over the track, Further, further around, it, it does make it bow quite, quite significantly. Off into the distance again, under the old gantries, into that uh, curve under the elevated section, the flyover there. And we'll, we'll just see if we can see it bow as it, as it comes round again. And again, just listen to it coming across all that point work into the old third radius curve, and then up the old incline. I don't think we're going to be able to see it bow. That's the bit it really doesn't like just there. I've got an extra gap in the, in the elevated piers there, just so it can bridge the track. But I think that's about it this week. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye now.